if you've been following satellite internet for van life, overlanding or remote work, you'll already know that Starlink has pretty much owned this space for the last few years. But now there's a serious new contender on the horizon, Amazon Leo. So the big question is, is Leo a genuine alternative to Starlink? And when might people like us actually be able to use it? Let's take a look at what we know so far. Amazon's satellite internet project originally launched back in 2019 under the name Project Creeper. The goal was simple but ambitious to provide low latency broadband internet using low earth orbit satellites. Fast forward to November 2025 and Project Creeper was officially rebranded as Amazon Leo. Now that rebrand is important because moving from a project to a named product strongly suggests things are finally moving out of the lab and into the real world. They've definitely got some catching up to do with Starlink, but momentum is clearly building. Right now, in December 2025, Amazon Leo has around 150 satellites in orbit. To put that into context, it's estimated that 578 satellites are needed just to provide a baseline coverage over North America. So 150 satellites is nowhere near full coverage, but it is enough to begin real world testing. And that's a huge milestone. It also gives us a good indication that coverage will start ramping up fairly quickly from here. Enterprise customers are already using Leo, and this is where things get really interesting. Using that current 150 satellites constellation, Amazon Leo has already announced live enterprise partnerships. That includes JetBlue using Leo for in flight connectivity, Hunt Energy Network installing terminals at remote energy sites, and Connected Farms providing connectivity for agriculture. The fact that these companies are using the service and Amazon is happy to publicly name them is a very positive sign. Consumer access isn't here yet, but we'll come back to that. Amazon Leo have also announced its hardware lineup made up of the Ultra, the Pro, and probably most interesting to us, the Nano. Leo Ultra at 51 centimeters by 76 centimeters is an enterprise grade high performance terminal with phased array antenna design, capable of up to one gigabit per second download and 400 megabits per second upload speeds. One of the fastest commercial satellite internet terminals in production. It's weatherproof, ruggedized, and made for industrial, government, and enterprise applications. This is what's currently being deployed in that private enterprise preview, ahead of a broader availability in 2026. We know less about the more consumer-focused hardware. The Leo Pro is a smaller 28 by 28 centimeters, expected to deliver around 400 megabits per second download for residential and small business. It's around the same size as the current Starlink Mini, which is 30 centimeters by 26 centimeters. The Leo Nano, a compact portable phased array antenna at just 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters for what Amazon calls basic broadband access with a maximum speed of 100 megabits per second download, we suspect is aimed at the more portable markets but that top end speed limitation could be an issue for some. What's notable here is that it appears Amazon plans to launch with multiple hardware options from day one, something that it took Starlink quite a while to figure out. At this stage though, the consumer hardware is fairly conceptual. We mainly know size, weight and the expected performance. If we compare the size of the Leo Pro to the Starlink Mini, which has the addition of this neat tripod power bank, which we'll be reviewing in a future video, then they're actually not worlds apart in terms of footprint and capability, which is great news for van lifers and mobile setups. But time will tell if the Nano is expected to be this size, is more of a competitor to the Starlink Mini. Now let's talk timelines, because this is what everyone really wants to know. Amazon Leo already has the necessary approvals in place for both the UK and the EU, which is a big hurdle cleared. Amazon has announced some very ambitious rollout targets. By the end of quarter one, 2026, full coverage is planned for North America, Canada, Germany, and the UK. 
26 countries by the end of 2026, 54 countries by the end of 2027, and around 100 countries by the end of 2028. Now, Amazon hasn't been crystal clear on whether this coverage is enterprise only or consumer ready. But if you look at their website and their marketing imagery, it's pretty clear that direct consumer use is a major goal for them. So it's widely expected that consumer availability will follow fairly soon after enterprise rollout in each region. So what don't we know yet? Well, this is where the big unanswered questions come in. Probably the most important one is pricing. We currently have no idea how much the hardware will cost, what the monthly plans will look like. We don't know um, what Leo will offer when it comes to flexible tariffs like Starlink, and will there be a low cost standby mode? How easy will it be to roam between regions? And for use on the road, we also don't know the power consumption, the Wi-Fi standards, the connectivity options, or what accessories are going to be available for mobile and van installs, which are all crucial details and all still unknown. Starlink has a multi-year head start and is already working on its next generation satellite constellation. So the big question remains, can Amazon Leo actually catch up? Well, with Amazon's resources and an aggressive rollout plan, it's definitely possible, but there's still a long way to go. For now, Amazon Leo is shaping up to be the first truly credible alternative to Starlink. There's still a lot we don't know, but over the next 12 to 18 months, we expect a lot more information to drop. And you can be sure that we'll be keeping our finger on the pulse, our ear to the ground and our eyes to the stars. So if you want to stay up to date with the latest on mobile internet, van life tech and real world connectivity, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.